Hi guys, it is another just gray, yuck, freezing, blah day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is going on 11 o'clock in the morning. 11 o'clock in the morning here at <laughs> Bugs in a Jar Farm in my little 7 by 7 foot prison cell. I have been in this, see I came in here about 5 o'clock yesterday afternoon and uh, 11 o'clock in the morning I have not, I've managed to brush my hair because my hairbrush is in here but uh, working on making it uh, into the bathroom to brush my teeth so anyway, it is a Friday. It is a Friday, and I think that means December 9th, 2022, here on this depressing day. And so what I am doing is uh, I've been lying here for about the last three hours uh, trying just to work up the energy to, uh, I, I'm, I'm putting rainwater collection systems on my tiny houses, so I need to uh, <coughs> get out there in this nasty day and start setting up a rainwater collection system, which, you know, we're not going to be even using for five months, just finding the energy to face this day and this is the very so being Friday you know I know it's time for my uh, ecological meltdown roundup ramp over there at Monga Bay and I will get to it uh, probably this evening but this is the very first thing the very first thing that I saw when <laughs> when I somehow uh, a rat uh, in the walls of the tiny house digging around a rat uh, 12 inches from my head is what woke me up this morning and uh, it, at 8 o'clock <coughs> I turned on my computer and of course went to medium.com the daily digest of doom and gloom this was the leadoff story in my uh, daily digest and, and I think this article as much as anything that I have ever read really spells out what the collapse well I won't say will look like already looks like for the vast majority of people including the 99 percent of humans who have no idea that we are in a collapse. And this is from, I think this is a woman. I can't, I think I see boobs on this person. Uh, D.K. Blair. D.K. Blair, she has 1.2 thousand followers, including me. D.K. describes, I guess, herself as a free thinker, free wheeler, never back downer. She writes about economics and climate change. But today, <coughs> DK is turning her attention to the great burnout. The great burnout, a civilization running on fumes. And this is how I, this is how I was getting myself motivated. She starts off with a quote from the New Yorker magazine. <clears throat> to be burned out is to be used up like a battery so depleted that it can't be recharged. In people, unlike batteries, it is said to produce the 
defining symptoms of burnout syndrome, exhaustion, cynicism, and a loss of efficacy. Around the world, three out of five workers say they are burned out. A 2020 U.S. study put that figure at three in four. Three in four uh, worker survey claimed they were burned out. I'm assuming this is mainly talking about millennials, but my guess, if it's true for millennials, is true for everyone else. <clears throat> Take it away, DK. For a generation fed on vacuous promises and lies as we work ourselves to the bone to enjoy the basic necessities our forebears probably meaning boomers, took for granted, burnout is not merely a passing physical fragility or form of mental fatigue, but a permanent condition and state of mind. Millennials are indeed the poster child of the burnout phenomenon. Having, having given everything to receive nothing in return, we drag ourselves listlessly from workplace to workplace, from boardroom to boardroom, and from Zoom chat to Zoom chat, wondering where the fuck everything went so terribly wrong, yet too exhausted and diminished to rile up the kind of fuss necessary for real change. Increasingly, however, individuals of all ages, thank you DK, this is not just millennials, increasingly, however, individuals of all ages are reporting feelings of chronic weariness and abject dejection and it is becoming a widespread, albeit highly misunderstood, cause for concern. <clears throat> it seems to me that both individually and collectively, vast swaths of people have been so utterly ground down and worn out by a rapid succession of serious crises in a system that perpetuates violence, greed, and wanton destruction, that our passion has turned to pure inertia, and our ha uh, ha, and our uh, and our uh, and our, uh, and our uh, uh, oh, to rampant hopelessness. Instead of listening to politicians blathering on about all the supposed changes they're going to make once in office, all most of us really want to do anymore is draw the curtains and fall into a quiet, dreamless slumber. Not only are we tired, yet even the establishment itself seems tired too. The energy out there just feels so lethargic. Yes. Recently, the UK, re I guess DK is from the UK, recently the UK received another Prime Minister <clears throat> and the British electorate so degraded from barreling from one prime minister to the next in the most incompetent and disastrous Tory party in human memory acknowledged Rishi Sunak with little more than an unenthused sigh. Even Donald Trump, usually so boisterous and big-headed, appear deflated and tepid during his Magaga raves. 
in spite of the fact that pretty much everything in his life, from his business to from his businesses to avoiding incarceration, now hinges on winning the 2024 election. Meanwhile, it has become clear over the past few months that we are once again heading into another major economic collapse. Yet, most people are simply too demoralized to care. We just keep plodding along, unwilling or unable to engage with any more futile debates about how to reform a system as unstable, corrupt, and lopsided as the one we are currently forced to endure. From quiet quitting to lying flat, all across the world, people are giving up en masse as we enter into what I have come to call the Great Burnout. <clears throat> On the surface, burnout may express itself similarly to laziness or procrastination, yet regardless of how much we enjoy heaping blame on the individual for their own setbacks or personality flaws, I feel like it runs much deeper than that. <clears throat> Mass exhaustion of this nature appears, in my opinion, as a kind of existential malaise an abject dissatisfaction with modern life and all its accoutrements, an anxiety-induced trauma at the mere idea of perpetual paper pushing and phone answering and news watching and nose grinding, uncompleted tasks, <laughs> Good Lord, uncompleted tasks loom large over our heads in some ephemeral universe of nightmarish mundanity where nothing ever gets finished. <clears throat> yes, the rainwater collection system on the tiny houses, the washing to take out the phone company to call, the subscription to Photoshop you keep meaning to cancel, the dental checkup you have rescheduled three times, the dozens of emails that have lain neglected in your inbox for the past three weeks, and a vast spectrum of other mind-numbing chores that never seem to go away. In the place of efficiency, we have endless meetings and paperwork and brainstorming. Instead of fulfillment and meaningful work, we endure longer shifts for less money and nothing but bullshit jobs. Rather than true happiness, we focus on achievement, attainment, and entertainment. It is all so exhausting. I would make an educated supposition that burnout has existed across every era and epoch and is most likely a staple feature of modern civilizations. The burnout I feel and see around me today, however, seems different to the kind that would, for example, follow a world war or other great calamity, although the COVID pandemic definitely made its contribution. <clears throat> for me, this particular great burnout has a unique flavor of its own. 
amalgamated by a cocktail of toxins such as wide-scale purposelessness, the soul-destroying nature of modern work, the breakdown of social bonds, the ubiquitous sense of losing in a rigged game. Byung Chul Han, <clears throat> author of The Burnout Society, argues that the kind of chronic fatigue we experience today is a consequence of engaging in a system that equates hyper-competitiveness and attainment with survival itself. Asserting that we have ent entered into a phase of serious self-exploitation, he writes that, quote, <clears throat> The acceleration of contemporary life also plays a role in this lack of being. The society of laboring and achievement is not a free society. It generates new constraints. Ultimately, the dialectic of master and slave does not yield us a, a society where everyone is free and capable of leisure too. Rather, it leads to a society of work in which the master himself has become a laboring slave. In this society of compulsion, everyone carries a work camp inside. This labor camp is defined by the fact that one is simultaneously prisoner and guard, victim and perpetrator. One exploits oneself. It means that exploitation is possible even without domination. Close quote. <laughs> Back to DK. We are driven, yet we also drive ourselves harder than many masters who have come before, yet towards what end? The pointlessness of our exertions make them all the more intolerable. And that is why I think this form of burnout is very intangible, unique, and nearly impossible to tackle. So let's talk about hurtling toward the end. <clears throat> Life in the great burnout feels just like a series of missed opportunities, lost potential, and plain bad luck. But surrendering to depression is defeatist when there is much more to this story. We fear it is our own laziness and personal failings that perpetuate our fatigue in some kind of cyclical self-fulfilling prophecy, yet exhaustion and inertia are natural reactions when real forces are acting against your interest every step of the way. At this stage, cynicism is a perfectly rational response to mass social, political, and economic decline. We have entered a true dog-eat-dog -dog paradigm in this race to the bottom as the structures we once relied upon collapse around us and we are left to fend for ourselves. The terrors that keep you up at night and wear you down to the bone during the day are real. 
those who hold the reins of power truly are insane and are driving us to the brink of extinction. To all those like myself experiencing the worst of this great burnout, the best advice I give at the moment is just to rest, recuperate, and relax. Unlike we were led to believe idleness is not evil, it enables you to pause, think, and wait for the next door to appear, to live, to fight another day. Amen, I guess, sister. D.K. Blair and uh, what do you think, Sancho? Uh-oh, Sancho is, are you actually, are you actually waking up at 11 o'clock? All right. The little burned out dog has decided he is waking up at 11 o'clock in the morning and looking for chippies. <clears throat> do you see chippies out that window or not? Are you ready to start another day of chippy chasing? You need to get a chippy light up. Get out there and uh, enjoy the great burnout before we're all burned up while well, you still can. So, uh, <clears throat> I'm off. Uh, should I get to my rainwater collection system or should I start digging the foundation for the new deck? <laughs> of course it's going to be dark in five hours so I better uh, get out of here and brush my teeth and get another day in hell off and running back this evening with the ecological meltdown roundup rant. Bye guys.